Thank you, uh, Commissioner, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to share the work that we have done on air quality, not only in this year's report, but uh, it's the 10th edition of this report, which takes an annual look at air quality in Europe. And in this latest uh, edition, we look at the official data reported by member states, but we also bring in near real-time data and Copernicus uh, data, which has really strengthened the up-to-date nature of the report. We do a trend analysis of concentration of pollutants and overall air quality over the last two decades, and we, as usual, make a link to health impacts and, indeed, impact on vegetation. And an innovation this year, it is no surprise, is that we also make the link with the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me indeed echo the good news that you have already mentioned. The overall trends in air quality over the last two decades are positive, with concentrations of pollutants decreasing. The number of dates, days that uh, member states see exceedances of target levels are lower than before, and that, of course, has a positive impact on human health, which, of which the impact we see is uh, decreasing slowly. I would like to emphasize that this positive trend is clearly linked in our analysis to European-level policies, which have been translated not only at the national level, but also to urban environments and to regional settings, and which have in many ways and in many cases led to increased attention at those levels and also investments in technologies in sectors. And I think that is, that is clearly a positive trend. We see positive trends on nearly all uh, pollutants, but we have a few problem areas that remain. Ground level ozone in particular is, uh, remains problematic, and this is of course linked not only to the immediate sources of ground-level ozone, but also to uh, the impact of climate change, which we are seeing. So this remains an area of attention. We also see, as you mentioned, that ammonia is still problematic. We see overall that the decrease in emissions from the agricultural sector tend to be slower, a bit slower than we see in other sectors. When we look at the impact on health, we use two standards. One standard is the European standard in European legislation. And there we see that uh, in most cases, people are indeed living in air quality that is much improved and that meets the standards of the EU. When we use the World Health Organization standards, however, we see that for a number of pollutants, 80 to 90 and even more percent of urban citizens are still living in air quality that is deemed unhealthy. And I think this sets a clear sense of direction for where policies are going in the European Union. We also see very serious large geographic differences with eastern member states and the Po Valley in particular, and in addition to that, large urban areas suffering from poor air quality, not necessarily always for the same reasons. In some cases, it is the energy system, think of uh, fossil fuels that are burned, coal, but also household use of energy sources, which in a number of cases is still based on coal or on wood or on burning whatever people uh, with lower income categories can use to cook or to warm their houses. In larger cities, it's often linked to transport and mobility patterns that are not healthy uh, and that cause uh, serious air quality issues. When we look at the COVID-19 situation, it is obvious that on NO2, but also on fine particulate matter, we see very significant drops, largely in metropolitan areas. In, uh, Italy, for example, Milano, but also in Spain, in Madrid, we see decreases of 70% or more when it comes to NO2 and one-third for PM10. Uh, now, we realize that this is, of course, temporarily and that uh, we should not be reaching air quality standards by locking down society, but it indicates that if we can keep pushing air quality standards 
And if we can keep innovating in those sectors that indeed serious benefits to society and to human health are there in the future. I would say overall, I agree with you, a very positive picture. At the same time, we still have more than 400,000 European citizens that die prematurely from poor air quality. And I think as a society, that means that we need to keep pushing for higher standards, for strong implementation, and for the type of technological innovation that will drive us in the right direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we now move on to your questions. And see, Natalia uh, is the first on the list, please. If you would just push the speak button, please, Natalia. Hello. Um. Okay. We'll come back to you later. I oh, know you're back. We can't hear you, unfortunately. Okay. Um. Now it's good. Yeah, do you hear 